Hi everybody, welcome back. Today's video we're doing a shark attack wound. Um, this was another Mackenzie's makeup challenge and I had super limited time to make it. So this one's quick and bloody, but I know that's, uh, that's a good formula for some of y'all. So today we're starting with third degree. It's really important not to mix the two together or contaminate the bottles until you're ready to mix them together. And then they'll start to set up pretty fast. So here I am mixing it on a palette. Um, I looked at a picture of a real shark attack and penned that onto my leg with a brown eyeliner. And once I've got the uh, um, silicone all mixed up from the third degree, I'm going to start placing it on the edges of that, smoothing out the edges and creating um, textured, like ripped flesh in the centers of each of them. Um, I couldn't find my palette knife, I ended up using a spoon. It worked okay. This is my first time trying using a spoon. Um, in the future, I think the palette knife was definitely the better call for refining edges, but I did like the spoon for being able to like pick up and place things where I wanted it to. So I think I might be using that in the future. Um, I barely made enough, so you can see I'm scraping here trying to get it all out and get where I want it to be. Um, I didn't want to have to make a second batch. Um, it is better in general to work in small batches um, my third degree is getting older, so it takes longer than it should to dry. Usually it dries super, super fast. And uh, since mine takes a little bit longer, I try to make it all in one batch because she's on her way out, this, uh, <laughs> this FX gel. Um, I need to buy new stuff soon, but with COVID, um, getting to stores is not so great. And ordering online, sometimes doesn't work out so hot because they'll send you product that's already been sitting in the shelves for way too long. So next I'm using 99% alcohol and alcohol activated paints and matching my skin tone or blending my skin tone into the third degree. It is clear so if you don't cover it completely it won't look opaque and it'll get kind of funny and you'll look like you have jellyfish skin. So say no to jellyfish skin and layer up your paints um, really heavily. Get a nice layer of skin color down before you move into painting in your wounds. For the insides of my wounds, I'm starting with a um, purple based red and then a true red for my first couple of layers. Once I get through those first few layers, I'm going to then mix in um, some darker colors like a dark brown and some black and some really dark purple. I wanna make sure that I'm getting the wound um, a good depth so it doesn't all just look like paint or all just look like one color. I'm getting a nice depth of color into my work. Here's where you can see some of those darker colors going into the wounds. Um, and I'm filling either in the deepest part of the wound or around the edges where it would be a little bit more shaded. After this, I'm going to powder everything so that I have absolutely no shiny, no shiny anywhere. And then we're gonna start working with blood. Right here I have the Melpax Permablood. It goes on, um, I think we've talked about it before in the Bonnie and Clyde video, it goes on kind of purplish, but once it dries out, it has this nice slick, almost permanent slick blood look. And I like this one because it's got like little chunks of um, coagulated, like blood looking stuff in it. So it adds a little bit more texture too, and that's why I really like this product. Next, I'm gonna go in with some fresh blood. So I'm just gonna paint that in. So if I get any drips or anything of that variety, that would be coming from my fresh blood, but I want it to look nice and wet. Like this just happened, it just happened and was lightly cleaned up. I 
I guess I shouldn't say lightly cleaned up, like not smudgy and crazy. I think the backstory that I wrote for this in my Instagram post, I was talking about the patient being like on the hospital bed and like the blood and grit has been cleaned away, but the wound is fresh. That was the reference picture I used, had a really fresh wound, but nothing like seeping from it. So I was trying to stay as close to that reference picture as I could. Using real life references is the best way to um, work around getting a realistic wound. That's my cat, Alistair. He says, hello. So this is our finished product. Nice and oozy, goozy, and gross. Don't forget, if you like my content, you wanna see more of it, click the little bell, click the like, leave comments below on other things you wanna see here. And as always, I will see you next time.